State management in Flutter can be tricky, and especially if you have many pages. So in this tutorial, we will cover scope model. And before we begin, just a word from our sponsor. Get a free full month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. After a while, and you feel like this isn't for you, you can always cancel a subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description. So the link can be found in the description for the scope model package. And we will just follow the simple installation. So you will add a dependency in the YAML file and you will run package.get and then import it. So here I have added a scoped model dependency and I have ran packages.get. So the first thing we will do is to create a new model called user. So I just put the model in a models folder and this is just a personal preference. You can put it in whatever folder you want or however you want. Uh, so this class user will extend the model. So the model we will get from the import of the package. So this, this um, tutorial will effectively show you how to change the name uh, in one page, a page, and that will update in all the other pages. So I've just set the name to a, initialized the name to a, to my name. And I added a getter and then a method for the change name. So this will just be a normal getter or the normal method for changing name. And we will add this notify listeners. So what notify listeners will do is to uh, essentially notify all of the components that use this name. So if we save that and we go to our main. So first off, we just import these packages. And this is the main page we have. So uh, that we have scaffolded. scaffolded. So first off, in my app, we will add a constructor for the user. And then we supply that user with a new user object. So the new user object will be the default user, this one, with the name of me. So what we'll do now is pretty much add a base place of where the, the model will be. So we will just set the scope model to the top of the application. So the scope model, uh, if you control press on that, you can see that it takes a model. So we will supply that with a model and that will be the user that we got from when we first initialized this, my app. So the scope model will essentially be where the model exists. And then if we scroll down to my homepage, which is this page right here, we can add something called a center and we, and pretty much a scope model descendant, which will look for this scope model we created back in the other page. So this will essentially listen to this scope model right here, uh, or it will look up in the tree until it finds it. And this code model descendant is having a property called builder with a context child and model. And inside here, we can return the text model.name. So I can't do a hot reload right now because we had a, we have supplied a new model to my app. So this is run when we start the application. So I will just run restart the application. So now in the center, we have my name and let's just add a styling to make it a bit bigger. So model.name, so model, you can name in this to whatever you want. You can have this to user or you can have this to my model or my application model or whatever you want. So then we'll just add a floating action button to navigate to the new site uh, or the page and new page will call change name page. So if we create a new stateful widget called my uh, change my name or change name page. Uh, in the body, I have added a padding and as a child of that, or let's first actually uh, create the text editor. So this new page will have a text editor in the middle where, where we can give it our name and then a button to update the name. So we have a new text editing controller called uh, name controller. And inside the child, we can have a scope model descendant, which will again look up in the tree until we find the user model. 
and we create the builder exactly as before and we return a column and why we wrap the column uh, in a scout model descendant is because we will have two objects that relies on the scout model so instead of wrapping the scout model around the button and also around the, uh, the input field we just wrap the column inside it so we can get uh, the user both in the text field and uh, the button. So we supply the text field with a text editor and if I, if I update that we can go to this new page and you can see that we have this text editor controller. Uh, and let's add the decoration. We set the label text to our model name which will be the name that the model has. So it's my name and we can add a button. So the button will be placed here because we don't have a row and that doesn't really matter. So what we can do now is on change. So when we press this button, we call the on the change name method. So if we control press on that, you can see that we pass in a string for name. We set the name of our, our model or user and we notify the listener. So all of the components that listens to this model will get notified of the new change. So we change the name and let's just add a set state to remove the text editing and a scaffold. And just for the fun of it, add a text to this button also. So if I would type a new name right now, so let's add testing and we press change name. You can see that our name both in the label and a scaffolded uh, snack bar shows the new name as testing. And if we navigate back, let's just close this. So if we navigate back, we can see our homepage also has testing. So instead of um, supplying our new site, this one, with a, a new constructor with the name, we can simply use the, this scope model to change all the places where we listen to this name or the model. So essentially, if you have 100 pages, it doesn't really matter. The, the notifier will notify all of the pages that listen to this model and it will update accordingly. So that's why a state management system is very good. And it's, as I said in the beginning, many different uh, ways to do this and many different packages to accomplish the same thing. But I thought that scope models is the easiest thing to start with. So if you like this tutorial, please let me know in the comments and uh, like and subscribe to the video if you like it. And of course, dislike it if you don't like it. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.